The world of the introduces were treated to quite the change of a pace a year back when the newly formed Cyanogen Inc. and a spin-off from Oppo launched a new high-end smartphone with a mid-range price tag of $300. Cyanogen and OnePlus aren't as close like they were once, but the wide-open Android variant has released several significant updates since the launch of the OnePlus. These two companies, after many hurdles, treaties, talking here and there, they eventually had a split up. But what's the case of the people who wanted to buy the smartphone? An answer was given by the OnePlus by releasing their first own official ROM, the Oxygen OS, which was developed with few significant people from the Pan or Android team. In March, when the Oxygen OS was released, the OnePlus also gave on their update for the Cyanogen ROM. Anyways, people, it's something like a shaker from Tech now, and here's my full review on the Cyanogen OS 12. The first thing you'll notice after flashing your Cyanogen ROMs is the same level as boot animation has been treating, and for those people who had been experimenting Cyanogen ROMs on multiple devices, will be able to notice that there's a difference in the boot animation of CM12 and CM12S. It's because the S version basically belongs only to the OnePlus. The material design was a major kickoff at the Google I.O. 2014. Luckily, the Cyanogen 12S is built on 5.0.2 Lollipop. The worth of this smartphone to live or to die is totally based on the frequent update that Cyanogen released. You'll also notice that the version name states Cyanogen OS instead of Cyanogen Mod. This is due to certain conflicts that the OnePlus had to undergo with Cyanogen and Micromax. Let's not get into much detail about it now. I do miss the lock screen of the same levinness. You won't be able to find much difference between the stock and or L lock screen and the same 12S lock screen. However, Cyanogen has managed to make its mark here as well by making the lock screen look very nice by adding little blur and total transparency. It's a see-through lock screen, unlike the stock one which has a static wallpaper or a wallpaper directly drawn from your home screen. The next thing they'll notice is a UI. Seem to home screen looks radically different from Cyanogen Mode 11's home screen. This mainly because of the UI overhaul that Lollipop brings in its material design. The Seem to launcher has many customization options where you can change the grid size, icon label, scroll effect, and even your icon size. And you have the widgets page where you can find your favorite home screen widget. This is some kind of a common feature which you'll be able to find in most of the launchers these days. And further, the wallpaper section lets you to choose a set of pre installed wallpicks provided by Cyanogen. The same wallpaper basically restores most of the stock wallpicks that were provided in Seem 11s. The same 12 s tends to bring you the stock and or L status bar where you can swipe off your notification which gets placed over a transparent tray. And you can get in the toggles panel by double swiping with a special feature from Cyanogen which allows you to access the weather details from the notification tray. The same 12 s brings a further essence of customizations of Cyanogen mode where you just have to get into the settings and in the menu you'll be able to find an option for status bar. Under this submenu, you'll be provided with several tweaks which allows you to change the clock style, battery status style, your toggle icons. Under the battery status style, you're allowed to change the stock battery icon to circle, text, and also switch its position, or even hide it. The themes have got much more polished with same 12 You'll be able to find themes that suit your taste. You can easily customize any of the theme just the way you want it. Just get under the theme settings and be able to find option to change the icon, navigation button, wallpaper, and also the color of the control on your toggle bar. The feature of changing the boot animation is a great add-on on Cyanogen mode. Unless you don't mess up your smartphone by choosing a boot animation of CM11 and trying on your CM12, which would probably might lead you to a boot loop. While the layout is perfect for anyone who's already used Lollipop and general look and feel is incredibly smooth, but there's a certain set of features that doesn't behave as expected. For example, the gesture control. Drawing a V on the screen to activate the flashlight works great but doesn't play well with the Lollipop interface. As a result, the gesture control doesn't activate the flashlight controls in the notification tray like Reddit on Cyanogen 11 is. Because there are two different flashlight systems on the phone that aren't able to talk to one another. It's a relatively small issue, unless you're in the middle of a crowd with the phone out and you're the only one who doesn't know the flashlight is on, because you've accidentally triggered the gesture in your pocket. Now let's take a look on some of the most important apps that Cyanogen has introduced as a key feature. Same as Vima, most of the native apps with the latest Android material design, of which AudioFix is one. Early known as a DSP manager, AudioFix is your complete control over your phone's audio quality and enhancement by altering the frequency response of the inbuilt audio system. You can manage and improve your device's sound over speakers, headsets, USB, Bluetooth, and even your wireless sound system. It includes its own presets on which you can easily improve the sound by making required amendments to the parameters like bass boost, surround sound, reverberation, and sound bounds. The app helps you create ample of quality sound for you to enjoy and is a great advantage to devices that have a sound quality issue. Using multiple devices is still very clunky even with the synchronization feature like those offered by Google. A startup called Nextbit is looking to change the way we use it with a product called Baton. The goal is to make switching from one device to another completely seamless. Nextbit Baton has three main features, Sync, Pass and Backup or Restore. The Sync feature is capable of keeping your app data in synchronization across all your devices. So if you're using a fitness app, on your phone to track your stats, you can easily use your tablet to view all the data that exists on your phone. This is more than just restoring your app data, which is already possible in Android. 